we can't do it alone. Because, you know, it, it's a problem that's, it's everybody's problem. Sure, they're coming up here to spawn, but they're not making it out. Like, we're destroying our habitat, and you see it every day up here. Our salmon need all the help they can get. The salmon that we're trying to help, I often re refer to them as family. If we don't do something now to protect and conserve what little salmon we have left, one day there's, there's not going to be any. Every little thing we can do, I hope, makes a big difference. If everybody does something, no matter how small, it will make a difference. We only took what we needed throughout history, and there was always enough. But it's not just us here anymore. And that's, that's one of the things that I say is, when I say our fish, I mean mine and yours. Because you're here, you're not going anywhere. We're here, we're not going anywhere, and we all want some fish. So we work together, hopefully we can bring them back to, may not be historical levels, but levels where our children and grandchildren and generations to come will still be able to have a salmon to eat. So this program really started and WWF's keen interest came from developing projects that really focus on both the climate crisis, the biodiversity crisis, and work that is led truly by Indigenous partners. So the KC First Nation has a 10-year vision for this watershed and it's really focused on working from the top of the upper pit watershed all the way down. My name is Rick Bailey. I'm an elected member of council here at KC First Nation. And my portfolio is Aboriginal title and rights, justice, treaty, and fish and wildlife, with fish and wildlife being my highest priority. How this project in the pit started, we got a call from a friend up there who lives up there that there was a landslide on Blue Creek. And that's Blue Creek is a Chinook spawning creek. I actually warned the loggers, it was a culvert, and I told them your culvert's getting plugged, you need to uh, fix it, and uh, the heavy rains are coming, and they basically laughed at me and said, uh, you don't know what you're talking about, it's fine. And sure enough, the big flood came, and it blocked the culvert right up, and took the whole road out, went down the road, and then uh, went through the forest, and took massive amounts of gravel, and put it into uh, uh, the best Chinook spawning habitat we have up here, and basically destroyed the whole bottom end of it. My role has been, uh, uh, at the beginning, it was uh, brought Rick Bailey in and uh, Ian, and I brought them up and actually uh, had them walk the creek and said we need some funding to help fix this uh, creek that got destroyed. So we're working with KT First Nation. Uh, we're a First Nations fisheries organization. Uh, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans and WWF Canada. Uh, and what we're looking to do is basically come up here and restore repair and maintain a lot of the important tributaries that are vital to a lot of the lower Fraser salmon stocks which are currently in a pretty perilous state of crisis. It's our belief based on the information that we can gather that what you're looking at here is a landslide and our thought is that this may have occurred during the spring freshet or snow melt um, of 2018. We first came here in October of 2018 to see uh, the potential fallout of this, this landslide. Uh, and realized that there was some concern with the amount of material that had slid off this bank. And this bank goes probably 150 meters up to a forest service road. Uh, and during fresh out of 2018, the belief is that the water basically flew down the side of this, destabilized the bank and pushed all this rocky and woody material into the creek. The major concern is that this is one of the main highways for these endangered Chinook to get to their spawning beds. Just as an example, here at Katsy, we used to fish 
three days a week, 52 weeks a year. And now we get to fish three or four weeks in August. Um, so, and it's because the salmon, our salmon family, they're, they're just not coming back. And it's, it's many things. It, we can't point the finger at any one thing. It's climate change, it's pollution, like uh, the plastic that gets into the ocean. The warm water that comes up from the south brings a different plankton. So I noticed this past week in our fishery, we got a lot of skinny sockeye. You'll notice uh, declines in overall habitat health. Um, and again, to the First Nations communities that rely on these, they, they need a place where these fish can come back to spawn and uh, increase in number and, and provide the opportunity for them uh, to harvest and, and maintain that food security and also maintain the overall uh, habitat quality of the surrounding environment. What happened up in the valley of the Sumas, flooding that happened, you know, and it's a kind of a wake up call for, for pit meadows. The whole area is diked off, you know, at one time it was, the fresh waters were, was a blessing. It was, made the land flourish. It made the wildlife and, you know, the plant life flourish, you know, and our people, when they come up to Pit Lake, they didn't go around the, the Fraser River and up the Pit River, they come across into the sloughs and rivers that were there, you know, and that's how they, you know, voyaged through areas like that. And there were different areas where they could camp and, you know, pick berries and preserve them. And sad to say, we tell our kids what the salmon run used to be like here. It's only a story now. But you know, in a future here, it's gonna come back and now we're gonna say the way it used to be, now it's back. And where we're at today is at, in the upper pit, um, upper pit river, an ancestral place of our people, uh, which is always important for us to be here and show our presence here. You know, not only for the salmon, but for everything that's up here, you know, the, the wildlife and the medicines that are still available to us is one of the most pristine areas. So Indigenous-led conservation is really about understanding the nation as the right holders to the land and they're recognizing and respecting their sovereignty. So it's about how do we support them? How do we be in service of their goals on the land? And so for me and our work at WWF, it's about how do we support their capacity needs, get the pieces they need in place to get the work done, and then really get out of the way and see the magic happen. Well, this is the Upper Pit River here, um, and Boise Creek runs from the valley to my right uh, and joins the Pit River here. We've been restoring a lot of the tributaries to the Pit River, um, so we've been going in and removing a lot of debris uh, like log jams and sediment and creating spawning and rearing habitat for salmon. Uh, all of our insights and approval come from Rick Bailey and his team at KT Council. Uh, and we don't do anything in this area without the approval of the nation because this is still the unceded traditional territory of KT First Nation and we're guests here. But the key to that is making sure that the communities themselves are driving the decisions, are driving the design and are fully invested from the beginning in what's going on in their traditional territory because it's really their approval we need to do this. Well, I'm sure survival egg or egg to fry survival rates will increase as the clean water from Blue Creek continues to, to uh, wash out any fines that were in the, those gravels from the glacial water of the Pitt River. Hopefully over time, survival rates will increase. And uh, I think there's a moratorium on uh, re retention on this river right now. So I'm, we're all hoping that numbers start to climb again. Everybody can make a difference. An individual person, a group, a community, recreational fishermen, commercial fishermen, native fishermen, people from other countries, everybody can contribute. Um, no matter how small, that little effort may be the effort that can save salmon. It is encouraging to me, you know, when I, when I talk to the young ones, and I'll say, I'll tell them I visited the upper pit, 
And I saw the Pit Lake Sockeye up there, you know. And, you know, and we're ever so grateful for the work that everybody does. The ones, everybody that's participated in what's happening back there. It's really encouraging. It gives me hope that our salmon family will come back like before. I hope that we can continue on and get that whole watershed rebuilt. And like I say, we've got 10 years work scheduled, but I think it's forever. It has to be maintained. It's all intertwined. All the wildlife, the forest, the birds, the reptiles, the, the, you know, the predators, the ungulates. Um, everything has to be there. There has to be a balance. And I hope what we're doing is enough to bring that balance back. And we hope we can keep it that way.